Hi, I'm Goldie, Life and Youth Coach. Today I'll be speaking in English and uh, the subject that I've uh, taken today is called um, space. Uh, you're probably wondering what space? Well, um, this is uh, otherwise known as psychological autonomy. How many times have you heard your teenage daughter or son tell you, I need to be left alone and I need some space? Does that ring a bell? <laughs> yeah. So. This is the space that, you know, I'm referring to and uh, it's, uh, the good news is that uh, it happens a lot and it's absolutely normal. Uh, your child will uh, inevitably ask for this space at some point or another. You'll feel them distancing away from you and uh, you might feel wretched and horrible. This has got nothing to do with your parenting skills. Remember, I always say your um, co-responsible together for everything that happens and nobody is uh, you know to blame the, the word blame does not exist so uh, you know coming back to this uh, space why why do they need the space well it's it's very simple um, they they've embarked on this uh, adventure of uh, self-discovery and uh, self-realization the key word here is self it's about them being alone and discovering how they want to be as individuals, what is it that they have at their disposal, and in what way will they take these key decisions to transition from being um, children to uh, adolescence and ultimately into adulthood. So, you know, you as parents have to do them that favor and give them the space they, they require. There's, there's ways that, you know, we can make this uh, easier for both them and you. In fact, you should see this as um, a journey, a transition that's actually quite, you know, beautiful and, and quite funny at times if, if you're willing to take it, you know, in, in good humor. So I'm going to give you five tips today which hopefully will help you to, you know, be on this uh, journey with your child. Um, but let them do it independently, okay? Number one, if this is not about you. Um, as I said, it's about them, okay? So, um, mummies and daddies, it, you have to, you know, remember that, yes, they say some pretty harsh things. Um, some of their replies and comments can, can be pretty biting. And, you know, you have to swallow that, that bitter pill because um, the truth is that they're just... Um, you know, they're on this journey and they're feeling things, they're trying to um, understand how, how, how things are happening around them, they, they've been thrown into this big world and they, they've been the spectators all their lives till now and when I mean spectators, you have been their audience, you have been their idols, they have looked up to you, they have admired you and you may not think but the truth is they've observed and watched you and absorbed every single thing that you've done. And now that they've uh, found this way of uh, voicing their opinion, well, it's just normal that they may not agree with everything you know you have to say to them. So there is some truth there. And maybe that's the truth that pains you, you know, hearing things about yourself that um, you don't want to hear. But, you know, this is not about hating them or hating yourself. This is about letting them be and not taking it very personally, okay? Um, number two, don't over-control. Um, I can appreciate that, you know, this is a time when you would want to make rules, put boundaries, um, even add responsibilities on them to, to help them to, to feel, uh, you know, grown up and important because it's, it's a time when you're trying to be as positive as possible um, and at the same time you realize that it's you know an intense transition of rebellion but this rebellion is not really a rebellion you know they're just symptoms of as I told you earlier this discovery self-discovery adventure that they're on so you can you know go about it two ways if you add too many rules and regulations to their um, to their daily lives then one this could just um, encourage them to, to flight, so to leave that space, that, that, that place that you want them to be in and seek that freedom elsewhere, which is not a good idea. Or number two, you could um, fill their glass so high up with water 
that it only makes them sink and that's not good because when they're supposed to um, you know fall and rise they just end up falling all the way and this creates a lot of insecurity low self-esteem and once again you lose um, the opportunity to let them become you know strong and resilient um, human beings so watch the boundaries and you know don't over control number three well this is a good one uh, you have to understand that um, it's uh, possible that they may seek uh, help outside and in fact you should encourage them to have a trusting and caring adult uh, who they can turn to you know we selfishly think that you are the one the the parent who will always be there and should be the one who they turn to but that's not quite true it's hard for some kids some teenagers to talk about certain subjects with their parents but if they are encouraged to go to you know that teacher or that grandparent um, or just simply a good family friend this is far more um, you know uh, reassuring for you as well rather than them seeking help you know online or through social media um, communities which is uh, you know a huge problem these days so encourage them to, to use those um, adults that they have around them if, if you can't be you know the the answer to their, their issues or their decisions um, number four uh, do your best to be open-minded this is a time when you're gonna cringe at the outfits they want to wear you're gonna be in denial of the fact that they may have a crush on someone or be dating even but um, you know avoiding it or denying it or walking away from it, it you know you're not doing yourself absolutely any favors all you're doing is um, creating a bigger gap between the communication you have with your child and if you adopt the, you know more open communication and talk about it on the table well this is only going to make them feel um, more respected and valued in the home and that's going to be um, you know the, the journey towards a much stronger and uh, you know uh, loving relationship with with your child um, and lastly and most importantly um, let them know that you're always there it's true that you are going to find it harder and harder to accept um, their rejection and they, they aren't going to turn to you for everything especially not for the things that they used to you know their physical needs are no longer your concern in many many ways um, they prefer to hear you know their friends opinions but they do need you okay and what you can't do is punish them for something uh, because they did not come to you the first time and when they finally do you tell them that you're not available you must always be available um, and you must let them know that because despite um, the needs that they have are much less now you know your dedication and love towards them must and continue to be unconditional okay so that's five things um, I hope that it's helped you uh, all to feel a little bit more comfortable with this transition that you know we're all facing uh, space that's what we've spoken about today and um, I hope that you know along with you know you as parents it gives you a better understanding of, of your teenage child um, you can email me and you know we can talk further if needs be um, you can go on my website and learn more about my services thank you very much have a good day bye